Hey guys, what's up? This is Diego here at Cinemagen Reviews. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to be talking about the 2018 God of War game, but this is not going to be a formal review in the true sense of the word. This is going to be just me kind of analyzing things and explaining my point of view on certain aspects of the game. Now, if you want my original review of the game, I've left a link in the description for the original Facebook post. You can go ahead and check that out. But the reason I'm here is because I've been seeing and hearing and reading a lot of different things from people who were actually dissatisfied with the game. And while I can certainly respect differing opinions, I still felt the need to speak up about a couple things because I can understand how people felt who were fans of the original games, like I used to be. In fact, the first time I played this God of War, I found it really infuriating in a lot of different ways. It made me almost miss the old God of War games by comparison, especially God of War 3, which, according to a lot of fans and myself at the time, was the peak of the series. What I didn't realize at that point was that sometimes when I try something new and I don't like it, it might just be me not being used to the experience because it's it's something new and I haven't done it before. That's why I tend to give things second chances sometimes. Sometimes when I try something the first time and I hate it, or I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I want to try it again, and then after that second time, I'm more sure about how I feel about it. I might still not like it, but at least now I'm sure about how I feel about it. So that's the reason for me being here today, is I'm trying to appeal to those people who didn't like this new God of War game, and hopefully I can get you guys to change your minds and maybe give it a second try, or at least I can help you understand where I'm coming from. Now, as I said before, I tried this game the first time and I hated it, um, I found the gameplay really difficult and frustrating a lot of times because I had never died this much in a God of War game before. I made the mistake of expecting the same type of gameplay from the older God of War games, but what I failed to realize was that they were going for something completely new and different. We'll get back to the gameplay aspect in a bit, but right off the bat there were things that I definitely enjoyed about the game. For example, the story. I'm more of a movie guy than a video game guy, so anytime the story in a video game grabs me, I almost instantly fall in love with the game. And with this God of War, I could instantly tell that it was vastly superior to the other games. And this is the first thing that I'm going to dispute. A big thing that I, I heard people complaining about was that the story made Kratos a weaker character, he has a son now, so all the stuff about him killing his family back in Greece was irrelevant now, they nerfed a bunch of his powers, made him less angry than he used to be, and ultimately he's just not as powerful as he used to be. And I disagree. You have to understand that they're not trying to retcon any of the old God of War games with this. Kratos is much older now. His voice is deeper to showcase that, which is why they recast the actor who plays him. His scars are faded. Even the tattoo and the ash on his skin is faded. As for his son, you might think that Atreus means that Kratos' family from Greece doesn't mean anything to him anymore, but that's really not the point of the character. You have to remember, in God of War 3, he got his revenge. He, he got what he wanted. He moved on. In fact, at one point in this game, Kratos even says to someone, vengeance will bring you no peace. And he says that because he knows that from personal experience. People evolve, they grow, they move on from emotional trauma. So this isn't a retcon of Kratos, this is a continuation of Kratos. Atreus is just a sign that he got what he wanted and it was time for him to find a new purpose in life. Another big complaint that this game had as far as the story was that Kratos didn't focus enough on the villains. There wasn't enough of the main villains in the story, and Kratos should have focused on just killing Baldur because that would have made the story more entertaining instead of just going to Jotunheim to spread his wife's ashes. And on that I also disagree. In my original review I mentioned how I stopped liking Kratos as a character in the older games because I found him to be boring, predictable, and unlikable. In fact, by the events of God of War 3 it became very apparent to me that the only people Kratos didn't kill was because they were just sluts with giant boobs that put out for him. And that sounds a little harsh coming from me, but at the same time, it's probably not a coincidence that the only person that Kratos didn't kill in God of War 3 was Aphrodite. Even the one person that he actually cared about that was a three-dimensional character, Kratos kind of got her killed too, or at least caused her death accidentally. And why does he do this? Revenge. And that's when it dawned on me that Kratos was a one-note character and a giant selfish asshole who was so focused on revenge that he honestly just stopped giving a shit about anything else. Yeah, he looks cool, and he's really powerful, and the boss fights are really fun, 
but he's just some asshole who got screwed over because he pissed off other assholes. It's just assholes killing assholes. It's too many assholes. I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. As opposed to the story in this game. In this game, the story isn't about revenge. It's about moving on from your past and not letting grief and hatred consume you. Kratos and Atreus just want to spread their dead mother's ashes from the top of the tallest mountain in the Nine Realms. And the fact that Baldur even shows up is really just an obstacle in Kratos' way. And even then, Kratos' first instinct is to avoid conflict with Baldur, because that's not who he is anymore. So if you really look at it in that way, this is a much better Kratos than we got from those original games. This is somebody that we can relate to. And who is the one making Kratos so relatable? Atreus. It's that relationship between father and son that drives the story. Kratos teaches Atreus how to be strong and capable and how to handle responsibility, while Atreus teaches Kratos to handle the world with an open mind. It honestly gives Kratos a much needed dose of humanity that he didn't have before. So now for the big one, the gameplay. Um, and this is the biggest change that we got from those original games. For some, it was a welcome challenge and a welcome change. Uh, for me, at first at least, it was about half and half. For starters, the game is open world, which God of War has never been open world before, and it makes for a lot of really long trips back and forth between certain locations, especially in the first half of the gameplay until you finally find a whole bunch of fast travel locations. So for some people at first it'll be pretty annoying, especially with the amount of traveling that you'll have to do, but in between those trips, the amount of stuff that you'll find, the puzzles that you can find, and all the enemies that you can fight, it'll keep you pretty busy. What that also means is that at any point in the game, as you're traveling, you can accidentally wander into a high-level area, and you'll encounter an enemy that can kill you with one hit. And I hated that at first. It got me so pissed off, I turned off my game for like a week, and then finally I just kind of accepted it as part of the challenge that this game presents, upgraded all my equipment, came back, and then I made that enemy my bitch. It turns out the real trick to beating this game is the equipment that you unlock, and knowing how to use it. A huge mistake that the old God of War games made was that they weren't challenging enough. Yeah, they had their share of puzzles which were fun enough to solve, but when it came to defeating bosses, I remember playing God of War 3, and in the opening scene you beat Poseidon, and I just remember playing through that scene and finding out, huh, this is not as challenging as I expected it to be. In fact, beating Poseidon in the game was really just beating a bunch of low-power enemies that weren't Poseidon, solving a fairly easy climbing maze, and then finally the act of actually beating and killing Poseidon was just a, a quick time event with a bunch of button prompts that was honestly almost too easy. The worst thing that a game can do is not challenge you, and I've heard the style of the gameplay in this game to be similar to Bloodborne meets Dark Souls, and I haven't played either of those games, but I believe people when they say that those games are really hard, because this game certainly is, especially when it comes to beating all the Valkyries. But it's not just them. There are a lot of different enemies in a lot of different power levels in this game, and most of them start off at a higher level than you. But believe it or not, I actually finished playing this game again a couple days ago, and the equipment that you can unlock in this game will have you shredding through your enemies like tinfoil. The last time I played it, counting the final boss battle at the end of the game, and all nine Valkyries, including the Queen, I didn't die once. Not once. And as you can imagine, beating the Queen Valkyrie on your first try is so satisfying in the best way. But what I'm trying to tell you in saying all this is to just keep trying. Because eventually, sooner or later, this game will become your favorite God of War game too. So all of you guys who did play and did enjoy the new God of War game, what are your thoughts? Did you find it a welcome challenge at first, or did you find it frustrating? And what do you think of the game now? And to everyone else who watched this video, I hope now you have a different perspective on God of War and you're willing to give it a second try, or at least you can understand where I'm coming from when I say that I enjoy this game. So that's my video. As always guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, be sure to give us a like, and if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new content. Thank you guys for watching Cinemagen Reviews. My name's Diego, and I'll see you guys next time.